I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Five stores that here we are on earth, pilgrims on our way to heaven. And as we're walking along, there'll be detractors and tempters that will not want us to get to the edge of the journey. That's why the Lord has brought us together so that He will equip us and He will prepare us, He will empower us so that all the power we need all the strength we need all the ability we need all the skill we need not just to do something within a few hours or a few days that we're able to walk confidently courageously and fearlessly and boldly in the kingdom and walking all through life victoriously that's why he brought us here and i believe he has strengthened us already and the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. He has empowered us every day of our lives. We're going to keep on experiencing that power in Jesus' name. We will not fail. We will not fall. Because the power of the Lord will hold us up in Jesus' name. Now he wants us to go out and do exploits exploits through Pentecostal witness before Jesus led his disciples here is what he gave them Mark chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 15 it says and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many every creature the Lord Jesus Christ led a great commission and he says, this is the great assignment I'm giving you. I have died. I'm going to now go to heaven. He's died for the world already. He shared his blood. But he said, everybody must know about this for their salvation. Everybody around you, everybody in your community, everybody in your state, everybody in your region, everybody in the nation, everybody everywhere. So he said, go ye into all the world and do what tell me out loud and preach the gospel to every creature it says proclaim that gospel announce that gospel spread that gospel tell everybody around you in your world that jesus christ died for the sinner Tell everybody around you that Jesus Christ is the Savior and He is the only Savior. Go ye therefore into all the world, He said, and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is the good news, the good news of salvation, the good news of the grace of God, the good news of the love of God, that God loves everyone and is not willing that anybody should perish. Tell everyone, say that to everyone, preach that to everyone, emphasize that to everyone. The number one thing you ought to do, if you're not able to do any other thing, this is the number one thing a believer, a child of God is supposed to do. Telling the gospel, preaching the gospel, proclaiming the good news of salvation and the good news of the mercy of God, of the love of God unto everyone around you. And he said, go. That word go is a verb, a word of action. Not just, you see it in church, we're worshiping in church, we're singing in the church, we're praying in the church, but in maintenance in the church, go. Go to the people out there. The people in the world, the people who are sinners, the people that need to hear of the word of salvation. And then it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I pray that our people will not be damned. 
your relatives will not be damned. Your friends will not be damned. Even your enemies will not be damned. That's why it says, if they're not going to experience damnation, if they're not going to perish already, the love of God is manifested in sending Jesus Christ to die for us. And now the responsibility is for you to go and tell them and go and tell everyone around. And then it says in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now signs don't follow people who are just sitting somewhere. It follows people who are on the go. Who are following people who are on the move. The people who are taking the gospel and taking it everywhere. Those are the people that the power, the anointing, the gifts of the spirit and the manifestation of supernatural power will follow. And then it says this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils. And then he goes on to say, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and they shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. He says, they shall lay their hands on the sea. What will happen? What will happen? Now, you need to pay attention. I've been emphasizing coming back to the Bible. Coming back to the Bible. It says, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall do what? Recover. It doesn't say only the pastor will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They, all the preachers, all the people who are going forth, all the believers who are going forth for the good news, who are going forth with the transforming gospel. We are the people, not just one man. The days of just one man show. The days of just a soloist. All that is gone. Everybody as we rise up in the power of the Lord and in the strength, in the might of the Spirit of God. It says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you know sometimes, uh, even though we read that in the Bible, when it comes to the practice, then we contradict ourselves. That's why I told you, I said, now everybody is going, everybody is preaching, everybody is going to take the gospel everywhere. Every Sunday, now when we finish the service, at the end of the service, whether it's combined service or it's your local service, in your district, in your group, anywhere, the moment we finish, we go into the world to preach the gospel to every creature. I want to see the pastor. We've seen enough of the pastor. Now, if you're sick, Tell the brother around you, I have this problem. Can you lay hands on me? You will recover. I said you will recover. We don't have to wait for some special people, now, appointed people, anointed people, the pastor or this one or that one. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then it says, so then after the Lord had spoken, Unto them he was received up into heaven and at the right, he sat at the right hand of God. And they, and they did what? And they did what? And they did what? Tell me out loud, everybody. They went forth. That's, you know, obedience. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, we must obey. Obey. It is when we obey the word of God, then the signs will follow us. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Beginning of spiritual activity and beginning of going forth everywhere. So that as you go, as you go, as you go, as, you, as everybody goes, then the preaching of the gospel is taking place everywhere. And many people are coming to know the Lord in Jesus' name. And they went forth and they preached. Where did they preach? Where did they preach? everywhere the Lord walking with them. The people that are going to see the Lord walking with them in Pentecostal power, in Pentecostal supernatural anointing. They are the people that go forth. They went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them with signs following, confirming the word. There's an amen there that is left for you. Where are you? Amen. But looking at chapter 24 of Luke, Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 45 then, Luke chapter 24, verse 45, then open he their understanding that they might understand 
the scriptures. I pray that as we are going through all these verses of scripture, the Lord will open your understanding in Jesus' name. And the Lord is revealing to us his word, but then it is still, they are still in the past. And while the future is coming on, while the Lord is leading us to something new, something higher, something greater, they are still bound in the past and they allow their past to destroy their future. Listen to me. They allow their past to destroy their future but in the case of these disciples the lord opened their eyes opened their minds opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and as we understand the scriptures we're moving on i said we're moving on and then it says and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Ye are witnesses of these things. Then he said in verse 49, he said, And behold, I said, The promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And that power is to preach. That power is not just for you to sit at home. I've got the power. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got this. I've got that. It's the power to be a witness, an effective witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 29. Acts chapter 5 verse 29 As we go, there are people that will attempt to shut you up There are people that will attempt to close the door There are people that will attempt to stop you where you are And then that's the time you need to bring out the strength you have The power you have And the de and decision and the courage of conviction that you have That this is your very life Anybody trying to take preaching away from you is already taking your life away. It's the very center of your life and it's the focus of your life. And it is the only thing you are living for to preach the gospel. This is what the Lord has given us. All the other things we're doing, He has not commanded us to do them. Let me remind you again. We do many things in the church, they are wonderful. Many things in the church, they are wonderful. But you know, sometimes, we emphasize and we focus on the thing the Lord has not commanded us to do. And then we abandon the things he has told us to do. I told you that he has not commanded us to sing, to raise up a choir, to raise up an orchestra. But a church that loves music like we do, we emphasize the singing and the orchestra more than the preaching of the word of god and once we want to come back to the bible that hey evangelism is the number one thing he has commanded us he told us to go he told the world and preach the gospel to every creature if there's time for singing we'll sing and the apostles will sing first and the preachers will sing false because it is a singing of the apostle no no instrument nothing because i read it to you in the bible in philippi while and silas sang and there was no instrument and the power came from heaven as we're coming back to the bible there's some people that you know they say we don't love the church anymore they don't want anything anymore they are going back home and they are sad and all that because we're saying look at what jesus said evangelism is the number one thing and all the other things we're doing if they support evangelism great if they're going to hinder the preaching of the word we're going to push them aside and throw them away. That's why I'm bringing you back to the world. We're going to go back to the world. I said we're going to go back to the world. And I told you there are people while we're going back to the world that will stand in our way. I said, no, you will not go. No, you will not go. You will not. That thing we want, bring it. What Jesus wants, take that away. What we want, do that. And we're seeing here. That what Jesus Christ has commanded will be number one in this church. Give me a good amen. amen. And I'm saying this for headquarters church. I'm saying this for all the regions in Nigeria. 
I'm saying this for all the local churches in Nigeria. I'm saying this for all the churches all over Africa. The people who are in this church, if you're a member of the church, you come for the word. The word is going to be number one. Whatever else we do, if it cancels evangelism, if it cancels church planting, if it cancels the great commission, we're going to say no to you. We're going to say no to all those things. You better just make up your mind. If you're going to worship in this church, if you're going to remain in this church, we're going to join hands and hearts together. And we're going to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. That's how we started. When we started in our retreats, we need to emphasize all these other things. Our emphasis was you come into the retreat, you hear the word of God, and then you move on. You want to obey the word of God. We're coming back to that in Jesus' name. I said we're coming back to that in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, listen, I'm serious now. Anyone, preacher, anyone, overseer, anyone, pastor, anyone, coordinator, that will contradict the word of God, two cannot work together except they be agreed. If I discover that you support something that you will cancel evangelism, whoever you are, I just tell you, we cannot work together except we agree. And this is what the Lord has given us. And so, if you love me, and you love Christ, and you love the Bible, you love the church, and you love the people of the world who are, who are perishing, will come into agreement together. The same thing with the members of the choir. The same thing with the orchestra. We are not idolizing anybody. If you love the church, if you love Christ, if you love the Great Commission, if you love what we're saying, if you put your singing under the preaching of the word, and you make your singing to support the preaching of the word, we'll work together, they were in agreement. When I tell you stop singing, let's go and evangelize, you stop, we're in agreement. When I say, okay, sing only for two minutes, because we want to preach for two hours, and then you do that. Once we're in agreement, then we'll go together. If you say no, we want to do our own will, I'll say no, sir, no, madam. Go we'll sit down and let us emphasize the same thing together. And I'm calling on the whole church to support the word of Christ and to support where your pastor stands. God has given you a pastor, He appointed me to be your pastor. And I'm your father in the Lord, and God gives me the word. I give it to you, and you say, yes, amen. We're in agreement together. Can I have your amen? amen. Witnessing, doing the work of the Lord. That's what the Lord has given us. And in the whole nation of our churches, we're going back to the word of God. In all the countries of Africa, we're going back to the word of God. In Europe, America, everywhere, we're going back to the word of God. Look at this. They try to stop them. They try to shut them up. And people still try to do that today, that day, that time, because the apostles had the power. The power to do what God had called them to do. And we have the same power here today. I said we have the same power here today. We're going to keep on standing whatever challenge.